Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all how I painted up my Imperial Bastion walls. I got the STLs for these walls from the Grimdark Stronghold Kickstarter that I backed quite a while ago and finally have gotten around to printing, and I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter in the video description in case you all want to check it out and pledge late. But for now, without further ado, let's get started. To begin building up my concrete effect, I started with a black prime and then painted on a mid-tone gray. Not too light, not too dark. All the paints that I'm using to achieve the concrete effect are 99 cent craft paints. Really easy to get a hold of, but really good for these larger terrain projects. The base coat ended up being a little bit bright for my taste, so I came in with one of my makeup brushes and a slightly darker gray and began to apply the darker gray with a mix of stippling and overbrushing, essentially a heavy dry brush. I really like using old makeup brushes for this kind of project, as the brushes hold a lot of paint on the bristles, but they don't deposit it all at one point, giving you a really nice texture when you're brushing it on there, and overall helping create that variety of color that we expect to see in weathered concrete. Now that I was happy with the base color of my concrete, I came in with a slightly lighter gray and began to apply it again with the makeup brush in that mixed stippling dry brushing fashion. I was looking to achieve about 70-80% coverage of the piece, mostly turning it into this lighter color but still having some of the darker undercoat showing through where the concrete was really old and weathered. To create a little bit more randomness and splotchiness, I came in with a wet paper towel and just kind of brushed it against the still wet paint to mop up a little bit of it blend the layers together, and overall just mess it up a little bit. I got the water for this uh, wet paper towel from my dirty paint water, so that added a little bit of extra free pigment as well. And you can see we're already starting to get that nice weathered feel with only two layers. So let's go ahead and add some more. With each new layer we want to make sure that we're picking a progressively lighter gray, and covering a little bit less of the model each time. As you can see here, I left a lot of the old gray exposed before I came with the paper towel, and I just again tried to blend that together, keep it nice and rough, and keep building up this weathered concrete feel. For me, four layers was enough, and with this lighter layer you can see that I've barely got any paint on the brush, I'm really just trying to create a couple of spots where there's a little bit brighter feel to the concrete, you know, just to see what it would have been like when it was new. I also want to make sure to catch any of the sharp edges with this really light color as it's going to help those angles really pop and give a little bit more texture to the overall piece. Once I was happy with the concrete, I came in and painted all of the metal sections with a simple gunmetal. I wanted these walls to be pretty universal for any battle matter game table, so I figured that standard concrete and steel fortifications would be the best way to go. Once I had all the metal details picked out, I came in with a brown wash and applied it pretty generously over the metal components just to give them a little bit more of an aged feel. While these walls might not be as old as the walls of the Imperial Palace on Terra, they've still seen a thing or two, and by adding this slightly brown tone to all of the metal components, it helps reinforce that aged feel from both battle wear and tear, as well as being exposed to the elements. You can also apply the brown wash anywhere under a place where there's windows or other overhangs of metal to show where water has collected some of the rust and it's starting to run down the walls. I decided to go a little bit light with this just because that was how I was feeling at the moment, but if you want to really go in and grind this up, you can go ahead and make those drips really large and go over them with several layers of wash to help build up that rusty, degraded, grimy color. I did want to add a little bit of color to the walls, but I didn't want that paint to be intact. So I grabbed some latex masking fluid that I keep around and used one of my silicone tip brushes to apply it randomly on some of the places where I wanted some color to be, especially these little metal caps on the fortifications. The latex masking fluid goes on white, but it will eventually dry clear, and once it's dry, we can move on to applying some color. Once the masking fluid had dried, I came in with the first of my two colors that I was going to use, which was Flesh Terror's Contrast Red. I really like this dark red color, and I use it in my Space Marines, my Custodes, and my Inquisitorial Squad for Necromunda, so I figured it would fit to apply it to my Imperial terrain here. I picked out most of the details in this red, including the wings of this Pseudo Aquila, 
as well as the large metal caps at the top of the bastion, because what is Imperial Train without at least a little bit of color and ornamentation? And of course, we can't have Imperial Train without at least a little bit of gold. So I came in with Nasdraq Yellow Contrast Paint and applied it to anywhere where there was a skull. Because, I mean, let's face it, if there's anything you can find on every piece of Imperial Terrain, it's some kind of golden skull. Once the contrast is dry, all I had to do was come in with my fingers and rub away the latex masking fluid. There are other ways to achieve chipping effects such as actual model chipping fluid and hairspray, but I really like using the latex masking fluid as it's just so simple to use and it gives a really nice natural effect without too much effort. And just like that, voila, we have a battle-worn imperial wall. For the simplicity of the techniques that I used to create this, I'm really, really happy with the result, and it made an excellent backdrop for my Armies on Parade board this year. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our future projects. If there's anything you'd like to see me tackle, whether it's terrain building, painting tutorials, model kit bashing, etc., leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.